Good afternoon, everyone. This is Simon Volta, Director of Sales here at V Technologies. Uh, we uh, welcome everyone joining today. We're just going to give everyone here a few seconds to uh, get logged in. Um, but today I'm joined by Scott Mills at Visible Supply Chain Management. Um, he will be co-presenting with myself um, to show everyone how Starship can help you with your post office uh, shipping, as well as the savings you potentially can see by utilizing the Starship platform. Before we get into the presentation and um, into the demo um, of Starship and QuickBooks, uh, just a couple of housekeeping um, things I like to cover before we start. Um, one being, if you do have a question, please just raise your hand um, by your name and then put your question into the uh, panel box. Uh, we will get to questions at the end. We'll have plenty of time uh, once everything has been presented. Um, and we'll address as many questions as we can with time permitting. And everyone is in mute status um, until the end. And if we need to reach out, we can at that time. So without further ado, um, again, I welcome everyone uh, joining today. I know a lot of you might be using our ShipGear platform uh, today, and we appreciate your business. Today we're here to talk about Starship and the QuickBooks integration and how we can help improve the shipping process. As I said, I'm joined by Scott Mills with Visible Supply Chain and he'll talk to you a little further on how um, maybe we can look at your post office um, shipping and how that can be, um, benefit you with some additional savings that might, you, you might be afforded in uh, the Starship platform. <clears throat> so we'll go through a quick introduction on who we are. Um, for those of you who may not know who V Technologies is or Starship or Shipgear, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we'll highlight a couple of main differences you're gonna see between Shipgear and Starship um, along with the Starship workflow. Um, and then we'll kick it over to Scott and he'll talk a little bit about the post office from a domestic and international perspective. And then I have two workflows that I'm going to take everyone through today. Um, the first, we're going to talk a little bit about how we um, uh, take your parcel workflow and move it you know, to a destination like in Canada. For this example, um, the documentation that you see in Starship um, and then how we could potentially see savings utilizing the post office over say a carrier like UPS. The second workflow is going to be a straight domestic LTL workflow for those of you expressed interest on utilizing LTL through a um, single platform. We'll take you through that and what the um, benefit of using Starship um, would be. And then we'll turn it over to, to everyone on the call regarding Q&A. <clears throat> so a little bit about who we are. Um, we've been in business since 1987. Starship has been around since 1989. We are located here in Cheshire, Connecticut. So all of our development, our QA, support, sales, um, everyone is here in our headquarters. Uh, we have 15 plus years in the Intuit QuickBooks space. So we have a very solid relationship with those folks. Uh, we are considered to be a gold developer um, with them. So, and then we also have about 10,000 customers uh, nationwide and uh, also some in Canada as well. <clears throat> um, I do have FedEx and UPS listed at the bottom. Um, and the reason I have those is because they do offer subsidy programs. Some of you may know the UPS CTP or customer technology program um, that can help pay for a solution like Starship and FedEx having their FedEx technology incentive program, similar program to the CTP program and that it offers a multi-year agreement with a revenue commitment and in turn, they're gonna turn over some of money to help you pay for Starship as well. If you're interested in either of those programs, I recommend you speaking with your account representative from each company and they can fill you in more details um, that how you could qualify. Getting into kind of the main differences you're going to see um, with Starship over Shipgear. Um, so when we talk about user interface, um, Starship is a single uh, platform. It's a multi-mode, multi-carrier uh, platform that allows you to have access to about two dozen different carrier. Um, uh, integrations where ship gear today is world ship or ship manager only um, and those would be your only two carriers you can access um, the line item integration um, we're going to talk a little bit about that as I get into the demo later um, how we can basically pull in all of the line items from the sales order or sales invoice and basically show those to you so you can either pack those inside of Starship however you feel like um, but it also allows us to automate your international documentation as well as your BOL for LTL um, as well Ship gear, we don't have line item integration. We only have header info, info uh, information coming in um, to World Ship or Ship Manager. Third party applications such as like a Fishbowl or an Activate 
um, like from a WMS perspective, are um, available in Starship. We can integrate to those platforms. Um, if you are interested, um, we're ship gear. We don't have any access to third-party applications. Um, rate shopping, you will see that today is one of the key features, um, how we can show you your licensed carriers that you have on the Starship platform and what your negotiated rates would be um, to you versus ship gear. You don't have availability to rate shopping um, at all. Batch processing is available in Starship. So for those of you who might be doing e-commerce or just in general lots of orders and you want to batch process 10, 20, 100 at a time, you have that capability in Starship. I won't be going into too much detail of that today, but if that is you know, of interest, we can definitely talk offline in more detail on how we can help you do that. EDI, so if any of those are using EDI um, type providers such as True Commerce or SBS Commerce or any other EDI provider, we do have a workflow that we can talk in further detail on how we can help generate UCC 128 labels, the ASNs, um, and uh, how we can generate that information back to your trading uh, partners um, very seamlessly. And then the e-commerce extensions, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this either, uh, but we do have currently about nine different e-commerce uh, marketplaces we integrate to. So if you are using any of these platforms, please let us know. and We can definitely talk in more detail how we can not only update QuickBooks on the right back, but we can also offer an update to your website so you don't have to manually enter the tracking information back to those orders. And then last but not least, we have access to UPS, or USPS discounted rates um, through Starship. Um, that is what Scott's going to talk in a little bit more detail to you later on. Um, but in ShipGear, we don't have any post office um, access at all, so we don't offer any discounted rates through ShipGear. So a little bit about the workflow on Starship. So obviously we integrate with multiple different ERPs. Today we're going to talk strictly about Q, uh, QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, Starship does offer QuickBooks Online integration as well. So for those of you on the call using QuickBooks Online, we do offer that integration as well. But those are the only two QuickBooks versions we can integrate with on the Starship side. Um, Multi-carrier, multi-mode, I already mentioned that earlier, how we can integrate with about two dozen different carriers. And then we do have something called custom rules or freight rules or ship via rules, whatever how you want to refer to them as. But we can set any kind of rules up based on your specific needs inside of Starship that allows us to add an additional handling fee, for instance, or route a, a shipment of very, um, with a certain carrier. Um, so any kind of rules that we want to set up behind the scenes so kind of take that off of your shipper's need, um, to do list, um, we can do that and automate that process for you. A WMS integration, we talked a little bit about Fishbowl and Activate are the two WMS that we can integrate with QuickBooks. Um, so those are available. Those are its own integration. Um, so we can talk in further detail if you have thoughts about moving that direction or potentially, you know, going to be implementing, implementing that in the near future. <clears throat> and then EDI integration as well, where we can offer an XML transaction back to your um, EDI provider with all the pertinent information that they need to update to your trading partners. So we mentioned these already with the partners that we work with. So Starship sort of sits in the middle. Um, we work with the guys at Fishbowl, Activate, and then as well, just to give you some examples on the EDI front with True Commerce and SBF. But again, Starship is just sort of uh, in the middle of this process, kind of integrating between all the different uh, platforms. This is a list of carriers that we do integrate with today. Um, so as I mentioned, we have about two dozen different carriers between uh, regional parcel, national parcel, as well as national LTL and regional LTL carriers. So again, if they're on this list, please let us know. Um, if for some reason you don't see a carrier that you're using that's on this list, let us know as well because we do offer uh, a manual BOL that is available to you in which we can help automate the bill lading and getting the pro number back into QuickBooks for you. Uh, the only disadvantage is we won't be able to show you the rates in Starship just because we won't have that direct API connection to that carrier. And then um, we do have the list here of the different shopping carts that are available um, to everyone that's use, using Starship. So if any of these carts are being utilized today in your environment, again, let us know and we can talk further on how the e-commerce extension can help automate that process and getting the tracking and fulfilling that order uh, on the back end. Okay. Well, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Mills, who basically is going to talk to us a little bit about the domestic and international workflow with uh, the post office and some of the savings you potentially can see here. So, Scott? Thanks, Don. 
Um, so hi, hello everyone, good day. As everyone uh, heard there, I'm Scott Mills, Account Executive over at Visible. So just to introduce us, um, we have over 25 years of supply chain management experience. Uh, we've been around for, for quite a while and I've learned many things along that way. Uh, our main focus is that we're experts in the uh, USPS. Um, we have some knowledge on uh, FedEx and uh, UPS as well, but our, our main focus is USPS. Um, we're partnered with them, and that's why we work with Speed Technologies as the rate provider uh, to their software. So as you uh, heard, Starship actually does have access to the to our discounted USPS rate. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then uh, another thing that we allow um, our partners and uh, the customers of our partners is we offer a sh uh, free shipping profile analytics. So um, something that has brought benefit to those who aren't quite sure what they're being charged, how much um, of their profile is going to expense versus um, how much they're uh, monetizing those, those, that spending. Um, so we're able to do that uh, for you, take a look at your, your file and be able to break it down for you into what your base rate is, what your surcharge is, et cetera. Uh, go to the next slide. Sorry. All right, so where does USPS win? And this is um, on the domestic side, though some of this does apply internationally. So your ideal parcel size are smaller in size packages that are under 20 pounds, going to zones one through four, um, and if they're lighter, five through eight. And that's pretty much your, your sweet spot for USPS. Um, we're not one of those companies that says everything should go USPS. Uh, the other carriers have their strong points, um, but this is a way that companies can save money. And additional savings that they'll see is that dimensional weight or cubic. Um, one way to kind of calculate that on the cubic side of it is if you do you, uh, the length times the width times the height of your parcel and then divide that by 7, 1728. If it's under 0.5, then you actually qualify for cubic, which is an additional discount on parcel and a great way to save money. So if you have very small packages that are lightweight that you're shipping, you definitely want to make sure that you are entering in your dimensions um, for that parcel because you could get additional discounts. And uh, those discounts obviously are through Starship. Uh, next slide, please. Um, something that everyone needs to be aware of when you're using the other carriers, uh, such as FedEx and UPS, they have uh, additional charges on the back end called surcharges. So this is something that USPS does not have. And we've seen, um, as you can see here, when you're looking at the chart, between uh, 2017 and 2018, there's been an increase in those charges. And this is where the bulk of your charge will happen um, on any shipments you have, especially if they're going to residential. Um, you can see the charges, uh, what they're labeled as on the left side versus what their prices are and how they've increased. The main thing to point out is that percentage increase on each of these surcharges. And so this is something that is pretty consistent year to year to year. Um, so something to be aware of, but I'll call out just one of those. Um, you see the delivery area surcharge res residential ground, right? This, this is for UPS. Last year, it was $3.25 added on to your base rate. Now it's gone up 25 cents. So now it's $3.50. Um, and that's something that is added on to your base uh, rates. So you always need to be aware of where are you shipping things consistently and then find out what those surcharges are and that's how much you're being charged in addition to that base rate. And that's why USPS is an excellent option because it doesn't have surcharges. So you're actually saving money. And as you can tell here, it's the dollars per package. Uh, next slide. And so just to give you an example of a shipment and the savings behind it. So here we are, we have a, a teddy bear that we're selling on our online store and we're shipping it from New York to California. And the teddy bear it, with the package um, weighs about 20 ounces or under two pounds. So as you look into the chart and just to point out with this chart, the UPS and FedEx rates are assumed 25% discount on their base rates and uh, the use of fuel rates effective the week of uh, February 21st, 2017. So a little bit, um, just more knowledge on where these numbers are coming from. So if you look at the first column there, that's the USPS rate. So you have the two pounds, the dim weight of two pounds, and your base charge is $9.97. 
you aren't uh, having any added fuel, no additional surcharge for shipping it to a resident, and so your total cost is $9.97. As you look over to FedEx and UPS, um, we'll kind of just focus on the main points. So your base charge for FedEx is $13.58, and for UPS is $13.05. But then you're getting hit with that additional fuel charge and you're getting hit with that additional residential charge. And so then we can see their total cost of 18 and 04 and 17 17. So you can see that there is a drastic a savings that can happen if you ship this type of package USPS and you're saving, you know, comparably $8 um, if you don't use FedEx or $7.20 if you're not using UPS. So really understand uh, what you're shipping, how big it is, and what's the weight of that. And if it's more on the smaller end, definitely you need to look at USPS um, as a uh, comparable option for shipping. Uh, next slide. And here's just another uh, comparison on prices. This is uh, the rate card that you will be able to see and receive through Starship. Um, on the left side, that's uh, Visible's new blue rate card. And as you can see there, it goes off of um, your zone and then the weight. And with this one, I always want to point out, always make sure that you're actually entering in your dimensions to your packages because that's how you can qualify for um, any dimensional weight discounts. And what we're comparing our chart with is um, the 20% off published rates and a 25% off home delivery surcharge for UPS and FedEx um, from what they've published. So just looking at the first zone, first weight, that's always the easiest. Uh, zone one, zone two, for, or zone two for a one pound package uh, for Visible's new blue chart, it's 635. And if you're looking over at um, the other carriers, you're looking at 894. So really take that into account of if you're shipping a thousand packages, what is that saving? What do those savings look like? And then just to point out at the bottom that we also do offer an 8% discount on international shipments. Um, and that's actually 8% below uh, CPP. So if you're shipping anything internationally, definitely um, look into the USPS as that option. And that's something that we'll actually talk about next. So Sam, can you go to the next one? And you can actually skip this. So basically, why would you use uh, USPS for shipping internationally? So just to give a, a quick uh, informative explanation of DDU versus DDP for anyone that isn't aware, um, DDU is delivered duty unpaid. So this is where any of the packages that you're shipping that the person receiving the package is actually responsible for paying the duties and taxes on that inbound shipment. Um, this is something that USPS utilizes and it's actually uh, a cost savings method that kind of alleviates the customer or the shipper from those taxes and duties and kind of can put that over onto the um, recipient. One thing to note, we have seen this in um, just being able to ship and, and, and pay attention to what happens. Um, customs isn't always the best at making this um, payable to the recipient, especially when it comes to very small, low price items. Um, definitely not something that is guaranteed at all, but something that you can pay attention to as you ship internationally and see, oh, okay, you know, the, the duties and taxes actually aren't being uh, required um, by their recipients to pay, and that's savings on both sides. Uh, the other one that most carriers are utilizing is DDP, and that's delivery duty paid, which means that the shipper is paying for those um, duties and taxes and tariffs, and that is something that will happen. Those, those um, costs will come back to you. Um, so it is more expensive, but the delivers or the delivery experience is much better. So in the end of the day, you have to decide for yourself which makes more sense, um, going with DDU or DDP. But once you've made that decision, make sure that your customers are very aware so they know what they're getting into and there aren't any um, surprises that could give them a poor experience. Next slide. All right, so here's just a, a brief sample of some in international surcharges for you to be aware of. And the main one that I wanted to point out is the remote area surcharge. So 
we have one of those on the domestic side, but internationally, it's quite a bit larger. So with this one, you're seeing if uh, you, you're shipping to a zip code that um, UPS or FedEx or DHL has deemed to be a remote area, you're going to get charged an additional $36 on top of that package. Or if your weight is, is much higher, then they'll take the weight times that by 0.36. And if it's higher than $36, they'll charge you that higher amount. Um, fuel is at 6.5%. Uh, and then as you see, you can look at those additional um, surcharges. The, one, the three at the bottom are more tied to just international. So elevated uh, risk is if you're shipping um, to a destination where there's uh, some risk due to um, any state of war, civil unrest, you know, any threats of that nature. You have your restricted destination which is a uh, country that has um, been subjected to trade restrictions that have been imposed by the UN uh, Security Council. So make sure you're aware of where people are ordering your stuff if it's uh, hitting a country like that. And then the exporter validation. Um, so this is uh, a surcharge that goes to any country that is subject to trade restrictions imposed by the federal regulation agencies. So. When you're shipping international, just be very aware of what you're shipping and where it's going, uh, even more so than domestic, because as you can see here, the surcharges are much higher and can really be costly um, as, uh, as uh, your customers are, are in these uh, particular areas. And that's honestly where bulk of your charges are gonna come from, whereas on the USPS side, there are these additional surcharges do not exist. So any savings, that or any charges you're receiving are savings on the USPS side. Uh, next slide, please. All right, and so the, here's the international cost comparison. So on the left side here, um, we have our USPS rates, and uh, we're comparing those across the board with DHL, FedEx, and UPS. Um, just so you know, this example is Priority Mail Express International um, for one pound packages, and uh, the USPS side is at uh, CPP minus 8%, and this one, uh, the rest of the charges for the other carriers, DHL, FedEx, and UPS, are their published rates minus 40%. And so, as you see for uh, Australia, there's 59.74 for USPS, and then it jumps up. For DHL, you have 65.47, uh, FedEx is 66.95, and UPS is 68.97. So you can see that. It's, it's not quite the same as with domestic. There's a, a further gap between um, USPS's cost versus the other carriers. And you can continue to see that as you look down with through Brazil, uh, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Uh, Canada is actually a, a part of the demo today, so I'll point that one out as well. Um, so with USPS, you're looking at 4061, whereas with DHL, you're at 4483. FedEx 48.74 and UPS 48.50. And so just always remember when you're seeing these base costs, you need to apply it to your business. Think about how many shipments you're shipping per day um, because a $4 difference or, a, or almost an $8 difference, that, that adds up when you're talking about hundreds to thousands of shipments. Next uh, page, please. And so now I'll turn it over to Simon for the demo. And thank you, Scott. And Scott, I just want to ask one question on that slide, and, and just correct me if I'm wrong, but that um, slide with the rates for the post office is reflecting only base um, rate rates for international, I should say, with the major carriers. That's not reflecting like fuel and other accessories that might apply, correct? Correct. That does not include fuel or um, any other additional surcharges. That's just the base rate. Good, great question to point out. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you again. And um, all right. So I'm going to take everyone through a um, demo of the two workflows that I've set up for everyone to see today. Um, the first being um, our international parcel workflow to tie um, everything together with what Scott mentioned, as well as I was mentioning earlier, um, and how we can kind of benefit from some additional post office savings if you're, again, shipping those lightweight orders. Um, but also just give you a you know, idea and understanding of the workflow that is you know applied here versus what you might be using in say ShipGear today. So I'm going to start in QuickBooks under a simple sales order I've created here. 
Um, as you can see, um, I have my two sale, uh, my two items on my sales order, um, quantity one of each. This is all going to come into Starship when I import this order. Um, we're going to map over the ship two information um, uh, as normal, and as well as the ship via is going to be translated in as well. So it's important that these this information is all properly filled in, so that way the mappings are set up and that there's no manual entry when we do it on the Starship side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and jump over to Starship here. <clears throat> and I'm basically going to um, open up my window here. Um, let me just put this in full size for everyone. Okay. So we have a couple different ways of getting your sales order into um, Starship. So if you have your pick ticket, your sales order, your packing list, whatever you have is barcoded, we could basically take that barcode and use a wedge type scanner and scan that in so your, your order would automatically import into Starship. If you don't have the barcoded, you could type it into this field. You could use the lookup window here. Um, you do have other options for um, documents to use. You can use invoices or sales orders or sales receipts. Um, you can even look up by customer name if you wanted to. Um, but again, you just don't have to use sales orders if you, you choose to use a different uh, source document. Um, but again, you could use your lookup window. You could look up your order number that we're gonna use today, my order 29. Um, if you were gonna batch process, I mentioned that earlier, this is where you would batch process and you could select multiple orders together, all orders, um, however you choose to do that, and then just start printing at the thermal printer. Um, or your laser printer, whichever you prefer. Um, however, you want to make sure that everything is defined inside of Starship prior to you doing that. And what do I mean by defined? I mean by basically having everything, um, dimensions, weights, um, all of that information inside of Starship for those specific items that you're shipping. So that way you don't get prompted for any error messages um, during your batch. But today we're just going to focus on one order. Um, so as I bring this order in, <clears throat> you'll notice here um, all the information I just mentioned that UPS Worldwide Saver is coming in uh, for Canada. Um, so I have my Canada order here. We would typically do an address validation if it was a domestic shipment. However, because this is international, the address validation is turned off. Um, so we won't be able to validate any international addresses to make sure they're correct. Um, but for domestic, we can have that automatically turned on to make sure that the street address as well as a commercial versus residential is um, being uh, applied correctly. So down at the bottom here, you'll notice your two line items, that cordless drill and the pedestal that I'm shipping. Um, it's defaulted to be packed into one box. However, if I needed to add a box, I can simply do that by adding a secondary box here, and I can move items around if I choose to do that. Um, so you'll notice now I have two boxes, and if I wanted to move my pedestal into the second box, I can simply do that by dragging and dropping, and now I have one item in each box, um, and I'm ready to ship it. Um, if I didn't want to do that, I could just simply leave it in one box um, and just ship the item, or better yet, I could just leave the box empty and just put dimensions in a weight and ship it as well, whichever your preference is. But if you are doing LTL or international, it's going to be critical that we know what that value is of that item. Um, so we want to make sure that that's appropriately defined somewhere inside of Starship. Um, so with that being said, if I go into the line item itself, so if I go through the, um, all these are standard mappings that we do during implementation. So your description from QuickBooks comes over, your item number comes over, along with your unit weight and your unit value all come over from the standard mappings that we have already set up with QuickBooks. Um, then if you are an LTL shipper and you want to take advantage of the NMFC code, um, you can type that in the first time. And then the minute you ship and process this item, we're going to save this for you. So that way you don't have to worry about entering that again. So all of this is stored inside of our Starship database. Um, so if there's any changes in the future, you can come inside of here and change this um, to whatever the new number might be, along with its class and then its description as well. If you are shipping hazmat, we do have ways of shipping hazmat items as well, and we can define those. I won't go into too much detail about hazmat today, but just understand that Starship can help you with your hazmat paperwork um, along with uh, getting the right labels printed uh, for those OP900 um, type of shipments that you might be doing. <clears throat> and last but not least, we do have ways of back ordering as well. Um, so in here, if this was an order, for instance, if you didn't have this item in stock, you can simply type zero, and now I could go ahead and you know ship this order, and only one of the two items is going to ship. 
um, because now I've back ordered the shipment and then you're going to have to go back in into QuickBooks and create a new sales order for that item to be shipped out in a later date. Okay, so I'm going to put this back to one. Um, so in the international tab, since we're talking about international, um, this is where you would go and define who's going to pay for duty and tax. Um, if there's a specific broker you use, you can come in here and fill all that information out so the carrier knows who to turn that over to at the border. Um, again, the duty and tax, who's paying for that? Most of the times, as Scott mentioned, that deliver duty unpaid. Um, this is where the recipient is going to be paying for those uh, duty and taxes. So you want to make sure that's you know appropriately filled out here. Uh, but you do have the ability of changing that um, to you know sender or whomever you wanted to. Description of goods, it will always say multiple when there's more than one item. Um, if there's a single item, it will reflect the right item description here. Um, and then if you're shipping any value over $2,500, we do have the ability to integrate with the ACE um, website, the former AES website. Um, so that way you can transfer all the information appropriately over to that website to get your ITN number to file appropriately with the federal government and bring that back into Starship and then go on and fill out the rest of the form here for Starship to process your labels. The value of goods is all being summed up by basically what's inside of these two items. So this is what's gonna be reflected on the commercial invoice when we print this. Um, for UPS, um, so that way it can get cleared. Um, and I should also mention we do support paperless invoice for UPS as well as um, FedEx's electronic trade documents if you're interested in the electronic format versus printing paper at the laser printer. <clears throat> the other option here, the key feature we show, uh, talked about earlier, the rate shop. Um, this is really important for those of you looking for the lowest you know, provider uh, when it comes to cost. Um, it's always going to default to the uh, transportation provider you selected from the ship via. However, if you come into shop all, you can basically go out and see all of your licensed carriers negotiated rates, along with the rates that are supplied, as Scott mentioned, through Visible, that we offer to all of our Starship users. That comes with all of your licenses. So you don't have to purchase the post office module. You would get that as a Starship user. Um, so you can see here in this example, as Scott was mentioning before, to Canada, for five pounds, the shipment, Worldwide Saver was going to be $135 with my UPS rate, but with Priority Mail Express, as Scott was talking about, you know, that's going to cost me $94 um, to get it there uh, a couple days after UPS would. So, <clears throat> again, I can make a decision, you know, do I want to save myself, you know, 50 or so dollars to ship at Priority Mail? or do I want to get it there a couple days faster and use UPS still? So that's a decision you can make, but here you can notice um, you know, all the charges are lowest to highest. The delivery times will come back to you um, by the carrier API. So these are all accurate API times. And then you can also sort this by carrier service level as well. If you click on carrier, it will put all your UPS, your FedEx, your post office services together so you can make a, a more informed decision. If you wanted to change this to priority mail, you can do so by just clicking on this tab here. You don't have to um, go in and re-import this whole order over again into Starship. You can do that simply by checking that purple box and you'll notice my, my account number with post office has appeared here and shipping at that service with Priority Mail Express International. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my rate I wanna show you with UPS. So if I'm good to go here, um, I can ship and process by F5 or clicking on this icon here, and I can ship and process this order. <clears throat> what we've done here at V Technologies is we created a smart label. A smart label is an 8.5 by 11 label that you could use. It's not required. It's an option. You can still print your thermal label that you do today. You can print your packing list to your laser printer today, or you can print your packing list to the thermal printer. It's user preference completely. Um, but this is just an eight and a half by 11. This is a four by six die cut that you would peel back. You can put this onto the box. The other half becomes your packing list. And now you're telling your customer in box one of two, you have your cordless drill. Here's your order number. We've shipped you one, you ordered one. And then on the second box that comes up, same thing, you can have your, um, your second packing list to go into that second box with the second label. On top of that, what you're going to get is you're going to get your certificate of origin. Um, so you'll get your um, NAFTA certificate here, along with the description of goods. 
We talked about that a little earlier and how Starship, the reason we asked for the line items is we, we help automate all these documents that you might have trouble doing today. We hear a lot of those complaints or you know frustrations, they wanna expand their borders. Um, this is a way that we can help you by automating this process to make it simpler to use rather than having to do these manually in the carrier supplied systems. Um, so again, this is one of the documents that you would get printed for Canada and the other document to commercial invoice would print as well along with its Schedule B information um, that's already inside of Starship um, that you've stored initially. So now that we've processed the shipment, if I come back into QuickBooks, you'll notice here that order wrote back the two tracking numbers along with the service that was used and along with that cost of $145.22. And some of you might ask, why is it $10 more expensive than that $135 charge? The answer to that question is gonna be, um, I have a freight rule assigned to that showing a $5 per package handling fee. So there's an extra $10 that I tacked on that I'm gonna make in profit um, on my customer for shipping charges um, to cover my additional costs that I might have with the carrier itself. So that's just one workflow there. Um, the second workflow I have to show everyone today is on LTL. So I'm going to quickly go through that here and then we'll turn it over to some questions and answers that we, you know, you may have. Um, but for this example here, again, same process. I'm going to go and find my order number I want to process. This happens to be coming in XBO logistics. Um, so again, we have the same concept here. Now you'll notice because it's domestic, this is a little, little green checkbox. Now it's validated that the street address is correct. It's a commercial location. Um, so I'm not gonna have any additional fees tied to my invoice with XBO. Um, so I'm good there. Down at the bottom, I have my two items, my pool cover and my single rope reel. I had those defined to be put into a specific packaging type. Um, so that's why there's two separate boxes. Um, so that you can do automatically and we call those packing scenarios um, in which you can define specific SKU numbers to a specific packaging type that you've already stored. So that's just another way of importing your items to a packaging type automatically versus doing a drag and drop feature that I showed you earlier. <clears throat> Everything is onto a pallet um, along with its appropriate class information. So this pallet is gonna be rated at class 400. Um, and again, all of these have its associated NMFC code along with its class tied to each item. So that way we know how to rate against this um, appropriately. So again, same thing with the rate shop. The rate shop, you can come in here, shop all of your carriers that you have licensed um, on the LTL side, um, and then it'll show your negotiated rates. For those carriers that we don't have a direct integration to, unfortunately, we won't be able to work with um, and show you the rates inside of Starship. Um, we do offer one third-party broker called FreightQuote.com at the moment. Um, if you're interested in taking advantage of their um, platform of carriers, that's a great way if you're doing little LTL to take advantage of some you know, pretty good discounted rates um, for yourself as well. And that's what these FQs are, um, are basically all freight quotes rates. Uh, but here you can see this is coming in XBO. So I have that <clears throat> marked off here. But again, if I do a rate shop, you'll see that AAA Cooper and Central Transport you know, between freight quote are cheaper for me to ship. So I could, again, I could just click here and now my AAA Cooper bill leading will print for me. But in this example, I'll leave it XBO. I'll ship and process this. <clears throat> you have a couple variations of the actual bill of lading that you can print out of Starship. Um, the first is basically our straight bill of lading. This is generic. You can customize this to your liking. Um, I'm gonna get to that in a second, actually. Um, and the other variation is the ex actual XBO logistics bill of lading that they support through their API. So the pro number will come back automatically for you and their API as well. Um, again, based on the carrier, that's not supported by all carriers. So just check with us to see what might be supported in the API, um, you know, or else you might need a roll of labels that we can scan in and bring into start into QuickBooks for you. Um, but you can see here all the descriptions, the class, the NMFC, that's all in the bill waiting for you for the driver to take and move this you know, pallet off to its destination. As I mentioned before, that uniform straight bill lading, this is our variation of the bill lading. It'll mention the name of the carrier up top, 
along with that pro number and again have all the pertinent information that you need listed down below you can customize this remove fields add fields but we give you a full template designer here to design this how you like as well okay and then last but not least i'll take you into that um sales order itself So on that sales order that I just did, you'll notice here that XBO Logistics, along with that pro number, along with the cost of the freight as well as put back onto that sales order. So with that being said, um, so that is the workflow between parcel as well as LTL. Um, one thing I do like to cover here um, is basically you do get your um, do you get two different tools that come with Starship in part of your license, one being the dashboard view. The dashboard allows for customer service, salespeople, warehouse personnel, whomever in the company to have access to their shipments in real time. Um, so here's a quick way to access to track shipments. You could come and click on find shipment information, look up any one of these fields to find the live tracking feed, once you input that information, you can simply come in here, you could click on that uh, particular shipment and it will open up basically where it is in um, status, if it's been delivered, if it's been processed, if it's been picked up, um, along with the carrier that has it, um, along with the how many boxes were shipped, along with the specific line items, the units that were in the box will be um, attached to this. So again, if you were missing a line item, you could quickly investigate that and find out why um, the customer might be missing one out of you know, four items, for instance. Um, another thing about this dashboard, you have visibility to diversify, you know, how, you, how are you diversified with your carriers? You know, is one carrier getting way too much? Is one carrier getting too, too little? Um, again, if you wanna drill down in any of these, you can by just clicking on any one of these bar graphs, it will show you the customers that are being shipped by that particular carrier. Um, and you can select the time period that you're looking for as well. And then you can also look up by how many, if you have multiple users processing shipments, are, is one workstation busier than others? And you can make some you know, process changes in your operation there as well. You have a bunch of reports here available, address correction, uh, late deliveries are common you know, uh, favorites, along with the applied versus contract. Applied is what you're charging your customer versus the contract, what you're being charged by the carrier. It's a great report to have at your fingertips to be able to see if you're upside down in your shipping, um, or if you're making some money or you're breaking even, um, or if you need to make any necessary changes by customer type. Again, it's just all your fingertips right here in one platform versus having to be you know, supplied by multiple carriers and multiple different platforms you might be using today. And last but not least, um, I wanna cover eNotify real quick, um, but this is a great way of notifying your customer of their outgoing shipment. Um, so here's just an example I created here with my company logo. Um, along with the couple items that I shipped to my customer. And then I gave them a hyperlink here to their UPS tracking number, um, along with a coupon code to come back to my website for a future order and use it as a marketing tool. So this, you get a full template designer. You design this however you like, and you can design this by customer, um, trading partner, whatever you decide to do. Um, but again, if you have you know, a need for this and to give your customers that information um, to avoid those where is my order type of phone calls, please reach out to us and try to have us help you avoid those calls and uh, you know, put it back on your customer's uh, lap to look up their own information. So with that being said, I am gonna open this up now to some questions and answers. Uh, we have about 15 or so minutes, so we have plenty of time. So let me open up my uh, questions here. And again, if you have a question, I ask you, know, you put the questions by your name and we'll uh, see how many we can get to here. All right, so um, first question um, comes uh, from Michael. So what's the relationship between Visible and V Technologies? Good question. So Visible is, um, as Scott mentioned earlier, is our um, you know, uh, partner in supplying us our rate cards for the post office, um, but they're also um, our partner in the fact that they can help us analyze you know, 
your you know invoices with a UPS or FedEx um, to help see if there's potential savings um, to be applied you know by utilizing the post office. But again, they're one of our business partners working with Pitney Bowes on the back end um, to helping our customers make the most informed decision when it comes to their shipping operation. Um, question, you were demoing with QB15. It looks like that is correct. Is it the workflow the same with QB18? Yes, um, the workflow is identical. Um, there might be some additional fields that might be applicable in QB18 versus QB15, um, but the workflow is identically the same. Uh, the same mappings are done. Um, so there's no difference on the different version. So again, if there's any additional questions, in the meantime, I'm going to open up a poll as well. I'm just asking if anyone could fill out the poll quickly and just let us know what you might be interested in learning more about. And we can reach out to you in the next few days um, to see if we can answer any additional questions you might have. Um, so let me go ahead and launch this poll. And please select multiples if you're interested in multiples and we can talk further offline. So the poll should be open. Okay. So we'll give a few more minutes to any additional questions that you might have. So questions come in, if you're doing a domestic shipment that shows it's a residential shipment, can you add your surcharge amount to the customer's invoice? Um, so great question, William. So um, we are going to, so if we've done a domestic shipment um, and it appears to be residential and flagged that way in the address validation, um, we are automatically going to take that residential surcharge into consideration um, from the carrier's API and reflect that in the rate quote. Um, so the rate quote that you see and that the amount be put back in the QuickBooks um, will have that um, uh, for you. So you don't have to worry about entering that manually back into the invoice. Okay, it looks like we have about 30% of the people voted, so I'll leave it open for another minute or two. And if there's any additional questions. Uh, in the rate shop area, can you sort by delivery day? Yes, you can sort by any of those column headers. So you can uh, sort by estimated uh, delivery day um, in, or also transit days as well. Um, so you can definitely sort, if you just click on the top of the column header, you'd be able to sort by that so you can see which one's faster than the other. Do you still need a UPS and a USPS account number? Um, you do need your UPS number because that's how we get your rates with your account credentials. Uh, the USPS account number, um, we actually have you set up a Pitney Bowes account. Um, so that way you can start seeing the savings um, with uh, the rate card that Scott was showing you earlier with Visible. So Pitney Bowes is the one that will be invoicing you from the customer perspective on a monthly invoice because you're going to be setting up a line of credit with them. Um, so therefore, you'll be able to uh, save some money, you know, from a cash flow perspective and not be billed to your credit card um, on each transaction, but more importantly, have a monthly invoice of all your post office transactions and pay that by check or ACH. I'm going to give it another minute, and if there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll here. Would you still need to have UPS WorldShip? No. So Starship, because it's its own uh, platform, WorldShip, Ship Manager, um, any post office um, platform you might be using today or LTL platform you might be using today all go away. Um, and then at that point, it'd be, um, shipping would all be done through Starship. 
so you don't have to worry about keeping those up to date. Our Starship and Shiprush comparable products. Um, Starship, again, has the ability to do LTL and your parcel. Um, Shiprush um, is basically a parcel only type of platform, um, where Shiprush, I believe, might have a monthly uh, subscription model, where a Starship is still a perpetual uh, model, and the fact that you own the license um, outright, and then you just have an annual maintenance fee um, tied around it. Um, but again, that would be the main differences between the two platforms. Uh, most customers are collect. Can we remove the ad shipping line to the invoices? Um, so if you have collect shipping, um, you don't have to have a write back um, for costs. We can turn that off. Um, so you can just show the tracking number. So if you do get those inquiries about uh, where the shipment might be, you can have access to the tracking information um, at your fingertips. Uh, but we do have the ability of turning the freight cost right back or the freight write back cost off. So you don't have to worry about that um, with those collect shipments. And also to add one thing to that with the collect shipping, uh, we also have the ability to uh, reflect third party or collect shippers. Um, if we bill it to a bill to or map it to a bill to field in QuickBooks um, to reflect the appropriate account number to bill to from a transportation side, we can have that automatically done versus you manually having to do that inside of Starship as well. But if you want to talk offline more about that, we can. All right. Uh, I think that's all. What, one more question. Uh, for, for importing and exporting sales orders, can you look up by sales order number then name? Um, Cheryl, I think we might have to talk offline on that one. I've got to just get some more clarification on that one. I can't answer that at the moment, um, but I can maybe reach out to you after the call and we can talk about that. Um, are you familiar with Worldwide Express? Can Starship be integrated with that platform? Uh, we are actually in discussions with them at the moment. Um, our development team is currently looking at that API, but it probably wouldn't be available for a few months. Um, so that is something we are looking at uh, with Worldwide Express at the moment. All right, well, great questions, everyone. Um, there are no further questions at this time. So uh, we're about seven minutes shy of three o'clock here Eastern. So we can end the call here, um, but I will definitely follow up with those of you who expressed interest on um, any of our um, products here and services. And um, we can definitely bring Scott into the conversation if it's regarding post office and see how we can help you, um, you know, further streamline your process. So I appreciate everyone taking some time today. Uh, Scott, do you have any final words that you like to say? Uh, no, just thank you for the time and uh, excellent webinar, Simon. Awesome. Well, thank you, Scott, and thank you, everyone, for taking some time. And a uh, copy of the recording will be sent out to everyone as well. Um, and be on the lookout, too. We are running a special promotion uh, to the end of the month uh, for those of you who joined and registered for this webinar um, to help save a little bit on the Starship application. Um, so be on the lookout for that uh, promotion here to be sent here shortly as well. I right, thank you again and uh, have a great day, everyone.